As I record this, it's mid-November and Christmas is coming up. And let's suggest that I've not got enough money to buy presents for my family. So I come to you and say, can you lend me a thousand pounds and I will give you even more money back in return? And you say, sure, but when will I actually get all of my money back? That's the point I break open my Excel spreadsheet and show you how to create a payback calculation. That's what we're gonna do in this video. So if you're ready, let's get started. We're going to look at payback in three ways. We're going to start with a basic payback, then a discounted payback, and finally, we'll look at how we can calculate payback across multiple projects at the same time. So let's make a start with the basic payback calculation. Here we are in Excel, and we want to calculate the payback period for our cash flows. And in this scenario, the result should be 3.67. We're going to start in cell J5. I'll type equals let, opening bracket. Let is a function that allows us to create a name and then allocate a value to that name. The first name that we want to create is CF for cash flows. And this will refer to the range from C5 to H5. Next, we want to calculate the cumulative cash flows. I'll call this cumulative CF. And the value that we want to allocate to this is based on the scan function. Now, if you don't know what the scan function is, we have a previous video about scan. So if you check in the descriptions box below, you will find a link to that video. For our initial value, we want to start with zero. Then for our array, we want to loop over our values in our CF name. So that's the values from C5 to H5. And then with each subsequent value, we want to sum those values. I'll close that bracket at the end and let's now output our cumulative cash flows. I'll close the bracket and calculate. And as you can see, we now have our cumulative cash flow values. Next, we want to calculate the year where our cash flows are positive. We have year zero and then year one, year two, year three, and year four. Therefore, the result should be year four. Let's edit our formula and let's create a new name. That will be full year. To calculate that, we will use the X match. Now X match looks up a value. The value that we want to look up is zero. Our lookup array is going to be based on our cumulative cash flow. And then we want an exact match or next larger item. That means if there is a value of zero, it will find that position or it will find the first value above zero. I'll enter one for that option. I can then close the bracket at the end. Now in our scenario, our first cash flow is in year zero. Therefore, we need to minus one to get the correct year value. Let's now output that. Let's return full year. That now tells us that our cash flow is first positive at the end of year four. If we have strict annual cash flows, then we're done. We have payback at the end of year four. But if our cash flow is received throughout the period, we can apportion those cash flows to find out when during that period the payback is likely to occur. Next, we want to calculate the value at the start of the fourth year and the end of the fourth year. We're going to edit our formula and we're going to create a new name called year start. And for this, we're going to use the index function. This allows us to select a value from an array of values. The array is going to be our cumulative CF and the position that we want to get the value from is based on our full year. That is the value from our year start. We also want to calculate our year end. That will also be based on the index using our cumulative cash flow. And again, we want the full year, but we want the next year. Therefore, we are going to plus one. I'll close the bracket at the end. Let's now output both of those values. Let's take a look at year start. Year start has a value of minus 400. When we then return year end, that has a value of 200. 
So that is the point at which our cash flow crosses from negative to positive. We're now ready to calculate our payback period. I'm going to create a new name called payback. And this is going to be based on our full year plus our year end divided by opening bracket, our year start minus our year end. I'll close that bracket at the end. And now let's output our payback. When we calculate that, we get the value of 3.67 years, which is the correct value. Now, there are two scenarios that we need to handle. Let's suggest that in year zero, we already have a positive number. I'll enter 500 in there. And when that calculates, you can see our payback period gives us some strange results. Therefore, we need to handle this scenario so that if year zero is a positive number that it returns zero as the value. We also have the scenario where there isn't a payback period. If I enter an investment of minus 10,000, you can see that we return the NA error. And that's because there isn't a payback with these cash flows. Let's now edit our formula to handle both of these scenarios. We're going to create a new name called result. And this is going to be based on the switch function. Switch is similar to a nested if function. We have a previous video about this as well, so I'll also put a link in the description box below. The value that we want to check for is true. We are then going to have our conditions. We're going to check the index of our cash flow, and we want position one. That means the first value in our profile of cash flows. We want to check if that is greater than or equal to zero. If that's true, then we want to return zero as a value, because that means that our first year is a positive number. For our next condition, we want to check whether the value is NA. And we want to check that based on our payback. If it is NA, we want to return the text value of no payback. If neither of those conditions are true, we want to return our initial payback value. I can then close that switch function. And then for our let, we want to return our result. I'll close the bracket, I'll calculate. That now returns no payback because our investment is 10,000. If we change that to 500, it returns zero because the project pays back instantly. And if we change that back to minus 1,000, that now returns our 3.67. And that is how we calculate the payback period. We're talking about payback. So if you think this video has value, all I ask in return is you click subscribe and get notifications so you don't miss any of our future videos. Let's now look at the scenario where we want to calculate the discounted payback period. This is based on the concept that money today is worth more than money tomorrow. Therefore, we discount future cash flows to reflect this fact. We're going to start by copying our original calculation, and then I'll paste that into cell K5. We're now ready to create some additional names. At the start, I'm going to create a new name called original CF. This is going to refer to the cells in C5 to H5. We also want to create a name called years. And this is going to refer to our year values in C4 to H4. Finally, we want to create one more name called DCF. And this is going to refer to our discount factor, which is 10% in cell K3. We're now ready to edit our CF name. We want CF to be our original cash flow divided by opening bracket, one plus our discount factor. And we want that to be to the power of the years. That is how we calculate discounted cash flow. And those are the cash flows that we then use inside our payback calculation. 
And when we calculate that, it now returns the value of 4.2. So based on pure cash flows, we get our cash returned in 3.67 years. But because money today is worth more than money tomorrow, when we discount our cash, we get payback in 4.2 years. Finally, let's make our payback calculate for multiple projects at the same time. I'm going to copy our original calculation and then I'll paste that into cell J7. Now don't worry about this cell reference pointing in the wrong place. We will change that in a few moments time. We want to calculate for each project and each project is contained in a separate row. Therefore, we're going to use the by row function. The array that we want to use is our cells from C7 to H10. That means the calculation will occur on the first row of values and then on the second row and then on the third row and so on. The second argument of by row is the function. But if we look in our list, we won't see any payback function in there, which means we need to create our own function. To do that, we're going to use the lambda function. It's this function that allows us to create another function. Now the values that we want to pass across into our calculation are based on the values in each row. Therefore, we're going to create a name called row. Next, we want to use each row in our calculation. We calculate on our values in the CF name. Therefore, we want to replace this with the name row. That means that the first time it calculates, it will take the values from C7 to H7. The next time it calculates, it will use the values from C8 to H8 and so on. I can then come to the end of our formula. I will close the brackets and calculate. And as you can see, we now get a result for each of our projects. Let's do the same for our discounted cash flow. I will select the code. I'll paste that into our cell. At the start, we're going to use by row, opening bracket. The array that we want to use is from C7 to H10. Then for the function, we need to use lambda. We want to calculate on each row, and then we use the row to represent our original cash flow. And in this scenario, years doesn't change, and our DCF doesn't change. Therefore, we only need to calculate our by row on our original cash flow. I'll now close the brackets at the end and calculate, and once again, we get a result for each of our projects. There you go. That's how we can calculate payback period in Excel. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you next time.